Williams Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. A great honour to rise in this House and discuss uh, what the Conservative Party have put out as their key platform for dealing with inflation, cryptocurrency. It's a really good opportunity to, to look at what the Conservative leader has as an economic vision. And it's, it's perfect that it's happening here just after the weekend when FTX, uh, the crypto exchange site, collapsed, destroying $32 billion worth of savings in 48 hours. That is a record for a complete financial collapse. Could we say that that money was vaporized? Because if we look at what we have offered as New Democrats for responding to inflation, we put forward the need to get children dental care. Well, the Conservative leader whose kids get their own dental care paid for by the taxpayer opposed that. He said all that money to help children would vaporize. We talked about doubling the GST tax credit. The Conservatives were against it. They said that money would vaporize because of inflation. And of course, our work to get rent support for low-income housing. The Conservatives were dead set against that. They said inflation would vaporize it. So what did the leader of the Conservative Party offer as his one solution for fighting inflation? Ponzi schemes, cryptocurrency. Uh, this and in what it, it is a two-part strategy, the Conservatives. One was to spin cryptocurrency that you could go buy yourself a shawarma with it, uh, that you could put your life savings in it. But the second part of the Conservative strategy, I think, is even more uh, important to look at. It was his full-on attack on the basic principle of having financial regulations to keep people from being scammed. Now, I really appreciate the member for Calgary, Nose Hill, for bringing forward legislation that talks about the need for legislation. Like, she has rightly pointed out that if we don't have regulation, this dark money system could easily be a form for money laundering. It could easily be a form for terrorist financing. I mean, who else would want to have a financial system that there's no checks and balances and you can't trace where the money goes? So I, I appreciate that we know that there are members of the Conservative Party who are not in the thrall to whack job economics. Unfortunately, her leader is a complete, devout believer in whack job economics because he's dead set against this principle of regulation. He said, quote, Canada needs less financial control for politicians and bankers and more financial freedom for the people. He's referred to financial regulations as, quote, cobwebs that need to be blown away. And, of course, he has this other great folk devil, the gatekeepers. We've got to attack the gatekeepers, which is why he wants to get rid of the Bank of Canada. A full-on attack on basic regulations. Now, the reason that we have these so-called cobwebs, Madam Speaker, is because we've seen time and time again hard-working people's savings wiped out by flim-flam artists. Briex, Bernie Madoff, junk bonds, the derivative market that destroyed the savings of millions of people, they would love this leader of the Conservative Party. They would embrace him. They embrace their notion of freedom as the freedom to swindle, the freedom to hustle, the freedom to rob people out of their savings. So the leader of the Conservative Party was promoting crypto, but then we found out he was an investor in crypto. And I think that that's really, really telling. Because with a Ponzi scheme, you'd only get your money back if you sucker other rubes to put their money in too. So we had the leader of the Conservative Party using his platform to tell Canadians who were worried about their savings, hey, invest in crypto. This is where I'm going to get my money back. Highly irresponsible, Madam Speaker. Because who pays the price when $32 billion just vaporizes? It's not Goldman Sachs. It's not Jeff Bezos. It's ordinary working class and middle class people who were afraid they did not have enough savings. And I met many people who were investing in crypto because they were told, they were guaranteed that it was going to give them the kind of return on investment that they couldn't get anywhere else. They trusted the leader of the Conservative Party. And of course, he, he explained what his financial knowledge was. He stays up late into the night watching YouTube videos. Now, Madam Speaker, I stay up late in the night watching YouTube videos, too. I love watching old Motown videos. You know, when I've got to fix my toilet, YouTube is a great place to fix my toilet. 
But one thing I learned from the pandemic is just because Buddy with a baseball cap sitting in his mother's basement claims he's an expert on immunology and vaccinations, YouTube is probably not a good place to get medical advice. And what we've learned from the leader of the Conservative Party who stays up late into the night getting, learning economics, not really too bright to trust the leader of the Conservative Party on getting his economic vision from YouTube, saying we're going to get rid of regulations. We're going to get rid of the Bank of Canada. We're going to go after all those cobwebs that have protected people from financial scams year in, year out. So that takes us to the collapse of FTX because there were a lot of dodgy crypto sites, but this was supposed to be the good one. This was a really good one, apparently. So it was set up in the Bahamas, of course, because there's almost no regulations there. Uh, they have very, very limited financial regulation. It's set up in a tax haven with no reporting obligations to anybody. So it's like this opaque financial black box. Isn't that exactly what the leader of the Conservative Party thinks is good for getting uh, people investing and believing in crypto? They didn't have a board of directors. They weren't under the oversight of any American regulators like the SEC, the CFTC. So you have this black box run by a bunch of 20 year olds uh, who probably would love to party with the leader of the Conservative Party as they talk about crypto, concerns, crypto conspiracies. But here's the thing, what we found out with FTX, they also ran a hedge fund. So people were putting their savings and trusting this black box with no accountability, no regulatory oversight, and they were moving anywhere from between $1 billion and $10 billion into this side hustle. That's why we have proper financial regulations, Madam Speaker. It is really irresponsible for the leader of the Conservative Party to feed on the fear of people in a time of uncertainty by hustling a Ponzi scheme. That's what he was doing. And to say, trust me on the Ponzi scheme because I'm going to get rid of any regulation so that you can't really tell what's happening, but that Ponzi scheme will be there for you whenever you need it. Well, it's not, Madam Speaker, and we've seen the results. So I, I'm certainly uh, pleased that the member for Calgary Nose Hill is one of the few Conservatives willing to stand up in the face of this party that is now committed to anti-science, <laughs> anti-vaccination, and of course now anti-economics, anti-economics, that they feel that any kind of regulation on hustlers and swindlers is somehow an attack on the freedom, the freedom that we all enjoy to take our hard-earned savings and get hustled by some scam artist down in the Bahamas. That is not what we should be doing, Madam Speaker. We have to have rules in place, we have to have oversight, and we have to ask questions about a system that is supposed to be financial, that is trading something that doesn't exist in order to have no financial tracking of it. Because if you have an ability to transfer money through sites without tracking, of course it is going to be where money is laundered. Of course, this is where criminal activities is going to be. Is that the freedom that the Conservative Party believes is so important to protect? The freedom of gun runners and gangs to, to clean money through cryptocurrency? We need to shine a light on this practice, Madam Speaker. And for the people who lost $32 billion of savings in 48 hours, what kind of freedom do they get? Because those are hardworking people who trusted when they saw this guy standing there eating his shawarma, telling everyone, you know, this is the best thing to do. Your kids shouldn't get dental care. You shouldn't get the GST. What you should get is an investment in cryptocurrency with no oversight, and you'll be better off. Now, I just want to say in my final minute, Madam Speaker, uh, the Liberals aren't clear on this either. You know, before crypto collapsed, they were thinking this was pretty good stuff too. In fact, I know that the Liberals did put investments in cryptocurrency into the Deputy Prime Minister's riding. So before we start promoting these kind of dodgy financial hustles, we need to say what are the rules that are in place to protect people, protect their savings, and have proper oversight. That's something this leader of the Conservative Party refuses to do, and he needs to be accountable for. Thank you, Madam Speaker.